what do you think in your estimation from that framework would be the top one or two power moves or boss moves? Um, I'm showing my age who uses the word boss, you know, like in the old sense, that's boss for, for meeting professionals, whether they're architecting a, a new event or deploying um, a current event or, or debriefing one, what, what would you, what would you like them to know about that type of framework? Mm. What I think is, is helpful is we need a bit of a perspective shift right now as we're entering the 2025 events that we're planning on right now. I think we have to realize that what people are craving right now and what they're investing in, what people are kind of getting on a flight and going out to massive convention center to to really be in the midst of is not an event or a conference. It's a meaningful shared experience. And so on stages, when I talk about this in a corporate context, I call it a plus one experience. So just think of the difference between watching an Oscar worthy film alone on Netflix versus lining up for the midnight premiere, maybe even dressed in costumes like they did for Star Wars or Harry Potter, or the difference between listening to your favorite artist in like the best Bose noise canceling headphones in your bedroom versus being in the arena where it happens. And it's hard to describe, you know, when you ask people why they go to the, the arena, because it's not for perfect audio quality, your headphones are better, but it's for the connection to other fans. Some people call it euphoric or magical. It's really hard to describe, but I call it a plus one experience. And when we go to a conference, a corporate event, a meeting, we want that same kind of shared experience. So if you are stacking a lineup, speaker after speaker after speaker, no breaks, no between time, no networking, people aren't going to have that opportunity for connection. If you have a bunch of speakers that don't allow for interaction, they aren't actually really communicating with the audience. They're just kind of performing on the stage for an hour. That's becoming less and less appealing to most audience members. The same way that I've had uh, four or five event planners just in the last month tell me that they're not interested in hiring keynotes who are just going to deliver what their audience can watch on YouTube, which I think is really interesting and why so many speakers who customize their keynotes are on more and more stages now because you're getting something a little more custom and unique. You're really being seen for who you are and you're getting more of that shared experience you can really apply to not just your work, but your life. Hopefully leaving with not just a concrete next baby step you can take to improve your, your work efficiency or your relationships, but you're also leaving hopefully with a new friend, a new connection that you can actually use as kind of an accountability partner to take action after the conference. I think that's yeah. really what we're looking for right now. That Those are some great uh, ways to see it and, and a great framework, a great way to contextualize it. 